when you meditate, we're focusing on a part of our awareness that we don't share with anyone else, our own sensation of the breath, our own experience of what's going on in the mind. This is because eventually we want, to, we want to deal with a problem that lies in this part of our awareness, which is our pain, our suffering. Nobody else can feel our suffering, no matter how much politicians may claim that they can feel our suffering. They don't. They can imagine it, but it's something very personal, something very individual. And the Buddha's insight was that we can solve this problem from within. In other words, the solution lies in this part of our awareness as well, the part that's not shared with anyone else. Our own sense of the breath, our own sense of our thinking, that can be transformed into a path. If we bring awareness, if we bring knowledge to this, these different processes, we can change them from a burden to a way to the end of the burden. And we do live our lives connected with other people, but the connections are, are through our karma. We hear a lot about interconnectedness, that this is what our very being is, is something interconnected. But it's through our actions that we're interconnected. There is a sense that we're all living in the same world, breathing oxygen, as they say. Each time you breathe in, you've probably got a molecule or two of the oxygen that Julius Caesar breathed, or Queen Elizabeth I. And we all live in the same weather system, geological system. That doesn't mean that these things can contribute to everybody's happiness. These, these systems are not designed to make everybody happy. In fact, as the Buddha pointed out, a lot of the ways in which we are interconnected actually lead to suffering. Right now here in Southern California, the weather is amazingly good for this time of the year. I learned this morning that there's a horrendous heat wave back east. It's all part of the same weather system. There's no way the weather's going to be perfect for everybody all over the world. To be good here, it has to be bad someplace else. In other places where it's good there, that's going to, have to be bad here. We can't expect any real happiness out of those kind of interconnections. Or any reliable happiness. It comes and it goes. It's also the sense in which we're interconnected through our need for our requisites. We need food, we need clothing, we need shelter, we need medicine. And that really places a burden on other people and other beings. That's why we have to reflect on these things every day, every day, so that we use them just enough for the sake of the practice. Just enough food to keep going. Just enough clothing to protect us from the elements. Just enough shelter to protect us from the elements. Just enough medicine to keep the body going in relative health. Anything beyond that, we're beginning to impose too much on others. So the general in interconnectedness out there is not always a good thing. In fact, it's inner being is inner eating. We feed on one another. The type of connections, though, that can be helpful are the ones that we connect through our karma. That chant we have about our, our actions, gamma pantu, we are related through our actions. It's through our choices that we are connected with different people in different ways, which is one of the reasons why you want to be very careful about how you relate to others, how your actions have an impact on others. 
and try to create connections that are good. This is what generosity is for, it's what virtue and meditation helps in this way as well. The stronger we are inside, the less we have to lean on others. The more clarity we bring to our own actions, the less we're likely to harm others. The greater sense of strength we have inside, the less we're likely to do unskillful things. Because it's usually through a sense of weakness or being threatened, being fearful, that we can harm one another. So as we meditate, it's not just, just for us. We're creating connections, or creating the basics, basis for good connections. Without this inner basis for good connections, there's no telling what kind of connections you're going to create. You never have to know how long those connections are going to last. Sometimes they go from one lifetime to another, to another, to another. As that passage where the Buddha says, it, it's hard to find someone who hasn't been your mother in some lifetime, someone who hasn't been your father, brother, sister, child, son or daughter. But a lot of those connections are long ago. I mean, people you just barely meet and that's it. Other people, as soon as you meet them, it's like two magnets. You're drawn together. But magnets can be, in a sense, can be good or bad. You have to be careful. But we create these connections with the knowledge that they're all going to have to end at some point. So you want to make sure that the connection, while it lasts, is a good one, that it's beneficial for both sides. If you're going to be feeding off of each other, provide good food to each other, food that's actually strengthening so that when the relationship ends, both sides are better, have benefited from it, and have learned how to be more and more independent. Because we keep coming back to this part of our awareness, which is our own. You notice this when someone's getting very sick, it reaches a point where you can't really communicate with them. Someone's in a lot of pain. Sometimes the pain is so overwhelming that they, they can't get beyond the, the wall of the pain. They're stuck inside. Those are the times when you would like most to help and you realize that there's so little you can do. But we're, we're all going to reach that point someday. And to be less of a burden on one another, you want to be able to have your inner work straightened out. So that when pain comes, when illness comes, when death comes, you know to, how to handle the difficulties without thrashing around. And without being a pain to the people around you, a pain in the sense that pains their hearts to see you suffer. So you have to be very clear about where our true responsibilities lie, where our true position for strength lies. It lies in here. We always want to lean on other people. And part of us, as long as you have a body, you're going to be leaning on somebody. But you want to lean in as, a, as skillful a way as you can. Provide other people with support, too. This is what makes social life bearable, that we help one another. But it always has to be in the consciousness that these relationships are going to end. And as you die, as you go towards death, it's going to get more and more in this area right here, right now. Your direct experience of your mind, your direct experience of your body, how it feels from within. So you want to make sure that you've developed the tools from within. So that when you're left totally independent, you have the resources to maintain yourself with ease.